for our second independent loop, we are going to choose loop two. This means we're going to ignore loop three since loop three can be expressed in terms of loops one and two. Or in other words, loop, the branches of loop three are included in the branches of loops one and two. So let's just get rid of loop three there. We are focusing on loop two, so we don't need to look at the current uh, in the branch on the right. But we do need to look at currents I1 and I3. We don't need to look at loop one anymore, so I can get rid of that. So for loop two, we're going to use Kirchhoff's law again. We're going to start at point A, and we're going to end up back at point A. So in other words, when we take the sum of the voltages in the complete loop from point A in, uh, ending back up at point A, we have to go from A to B, we have to go from B to C, and then we have to go from C back to A, and we know that this must sum to zero. So from the previous portion, we already know what the potential is from A to B. The potential from A to B, we already know to be equal to plus the EMF of battery one. We already know an expression for the potential from B to C. Going through resistor one, we know that this is equal to minus current one times the resistance of resistor one which is equal to minus 2i1r. What we don't know is the potential from C to A. So let's look at that. In going from C to A, we are going across resistor 2, and the path we are taking is in the same direction as the current through resistor 2. So current 3 is in the same direction as the path we are taking from point C back to point A. What this means is the potential difference from C to A across resistor 2 is equal to minus current through resistor 2 times the resistance of resistor 2. Again, the minus sign is there is because every time you evaluate the potential difference across a resistor in the direction of the current, that resistor consumes potential difference. In other words, we are going from higher potential to lower potential. So this is why we have the minus I3 R2 for the product of current in resistor 2 and the resistance of resistor 2. This is equal to minus I3R, where again we're, we're setting R2 to be the base in which we are expressing other resistances as multiples of. So we could write the potential from C back to A is equal to minus I3R. And now Kirchhoff's law from A back to A in loop 2 is, again, the potential from A to B plus the potential from B to C plus the potential from C to A. That must sum to 0. The potential from A to B is the EMF of battery 1. The potential from B to C is the potential drop across resistor 1. The potential from C to A is equal to the potential drop across resistor 2. And this sums to 0. So now we have a second independent equation from loop 2. We have one independent equation from loop 1. Remember, that independent equation contains uh, two EMFs. And we have 
the independent equation from loop 2. Notice in this second equation, we introduced a new unknown. The current through resistor 2 is unknown. However, that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the current through each resistor. Well, we have now exhausted our independent loops for voltages. It's now time for us to use Kirchhoff's law for current into a branch and current out of a branch.